Hello, everypony. The Voice here, the host of the new show, The Voice Reads. This week, our piece of literature is going to be the first in the G.M. Burrow series. That's right, it is Twilight Sparkle and the Crystal Heart Spell. Chapter 1. A Crown Achievement All of Equestria had been celebrating since the joyous wedding of Shining Armor and Princess Miyamore Cadenza. Cadence, as she was called, was one of the most loving mares in all of Ponydom. The citizens of Equestria, including the newly recovered Crystal Empire, were living in a time of happiness and prosperity. Apples grew, apples grew in the orchards, creatures big and small played in the lush green fields, and ponies of all three tribes lived in harmony. And now, Another promising young royal had been inducted into the highest ranks of pony society. It seemed like the cherry on top of the delicious ice cream sundae. Ponies of all kinds from the far reaches of Princess Celestia's kingdom were curious about the new princess who had just been crowned. She wasn't just any pony. She was a young unicorn pony, with a velvet-hued hide, a beautiful purple and pink striped mane, and incredible raw abilities. Her name was Twilight Sparkle, and she was indeed very special. Stories of her amazing magical gifts had even been passed along all the way from San Francisco to Manhattan. These tales had started to become legendary, especially the one about the time she took on the formidable Ursa Minor on her very own. Or better yet, the time she had defeated the evil Queen Chrysalis in order to save the royal court of Canterlot. Every pony was excited to see what wonders would accompany such a unique princess's reign. Twilight was excited too. Not only did she bear an esteemed new title, but she had earned something unique as well. Twilight had received her own set of wings. Real Pegasus wings! She was officially part of a special breed of pony called an Alagorn. This meant that Twilight was now able to harness the magical powers of the unicorns, the flight abilities of the Pegasi, and the strength of a good, true heart of an earth pony. She was becoming more like her mentor, the talented and kind Princess Celestia, every day. But although it was very exciting for Twilight to become an alicorn, she didn't take her new gifts for granted. It was an honor to become part of something so rare and exclusive. She didn't care about all the shiny jewels and castle quarters she'd been given as part of the job. Twilight was happy to remain in Ponyville for now. She loved to spend time studying in her library with Spike, the baby dragon, who was her number one assistant. And having barrels of fun with her best friends. Luxurious castle furnishings could wait. Ever since 
Princess Celestia had sent Twilight away from Canterlot to study and learn the magic of friendship, she had really felt that Ponyville was her true home. Twilight was uncertain how she would feel if she had to leave it. And ruling her own kingdom? That was another story. It was true that Twilight loved to help other ponies, to teach them the interesting facts she'd read about in the pages of her beloved books. She also enjoyed her position as designated leader of the Ponyville Winter Wrap-Up. But being in charge of the well-being of a kingdom of ponies didn't seem easy. She could tell that much from having studied with Celestia for all this time. Twilight was nervous. She still had so much to learn about being a leader. But then again, there was always more to learn. Twilight never seemed to be able to acquire enough knowledge on any subject. The world was so vast and fascinating. One afternoon in Ponyville, just after the Pegasi had moved some clouds into the sky for a short rainfall, Twilight went home to scour every book in her library yet again. She was hoping for some guidance on exactly how a pony could become a great princess and leader. There was bound to be some information that could help a pony out. She thought she was on to something when she first laid a hoof on the pages of the Princess Bridal. It was one of her favorite stories about royal ponies, but not quite right. What about this one, Twy? Spike exclaimed, pulling a dusty book with a teal cover from one of the low shelves. He couldn't reach the higher ones without a ladder. Twilight perused the book, titled Purple Rain by some pony named Crystal Ball. But that one was no good either. It just had a ton of song lyrics in it. Spike! Twilight exclaimed. What am I going to do? She threw her hoof into the air, exasperated. I need some pony's help. I just know there's more to being a leader than what I already know. Twilight began to pace around and around the room in her usual manner. She did this so often that the floorboards had worn down, forming a large circle. Spike liked to call it the Twilight Zone. Spike furrowed his scaly brow, and clapped his claws together. That's it! He sprang up and knocked several titles from the, from the shelf. A moment later, he appeared in the pile of fallen books, clutching one with a familiar blue and yellow cover. Twilight recognized it immediately as Daring Do and the Trek to the Terrifying Tower. She had already read all the books in the series about the fearless pony adventure at least three times. Twilight cocked her head to the side. I don't get it, Spike. What's Daring Do got to do with this? Well... You know how Daring Do has to rescue a pony who's been locked in a tower surrounded by a moat filled with sharp-toothed piranhas? Yeah. So? 
And you know how she has to dive into the water in order to get to the tower, even though the fish are secretly her biggest fear? Spike, spit it out already! Twilight exclaimed. Do you have an idea on how to help me or not? She was beginning to look a bit stressed. Her mane had gone frizzy, and one of her eyes was twitching ever so slightly. Twilight took her responsibilities very seriously. Sometimes too seriously. Well, basically, Daring Do wants to overcome her fears once and for all. So, she asks some older ex-adventurer ponies, like Professor A.B. Ravenhoff, for tips on how to do it. Spike spread his short arms wide in triumph. Aha! It was so obvious to Twilight now. She needed guidance. Real guidance. From some pony who had been around the stable block a few times. Why didn't I think of that? Twilight's face lit up, thinking of all the ponies she could interview. Good work, Spike. It's perfect. Spike blushed. He loved nothing more than to be a good assistant to his best friend. But he could, but he could hardly say, You're welcome, before Twilight Sparkle was out at the door to find out about the great leaders of Equestria, straight from the horse's mouth. This concludes the end of chapter one. Now, before we move on to chapter two in the next video, I must apologize for the voices, obviously. The voices that I can do are very limited, but give me some credit as I am trying.